time to check in with our lizard overlords. What are they up to? Well, this. Is this the worst hour now? Are we done our first hour? Yeah, we're into our worst hour now. Keep your expectations of this episode low. <laughs> Starting the worst hour now, I feel like we've crossed into like maybe not great content hour. Welcome to our worst hour. I so not this weekend, the weekend before. I was looking at my thing and it was like, oh, it's 500 kilometers to an oil change. And I thought I should get that done on Sunday and then shit happened. I never got it done. But well, I got 500 kilometers for the week. I get the oil change. When I got to Friday, by Friday night, I'd driven 3000 kilometers that week. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Well, we should got a fucking oil change last week. But I don't, I'm not usually conscious of how many kilometers I'm driving per week because I don't normally count. I just get in and keep driving. But this week I was, I was like, man, I'm, I didn't, and I didn't even, last week I didn't even think I drove far. I drove a lot and I drove 3,000 kids. Yeah. Some weeks are big weeks. But you know, like the truck doesn't self destruct because you're a little over on your oil change. I've gone no, I, kilometers over without a hitch. I, I just like I like to I it makes me feel better when I know that it's because now that truck, the white dodge, I was thinking about trading it in. I was like, now it has weight it's two hundred and forty seven thousand kilometers on it now. Like I feel like this one's gonna become part of the fleet forever now, like the brown truck that has four hundred and sixty thousand kilometers on it or something. They're just not worth it. So, you know the truck I was going to send to auction? Yeah, My, yeah. The truck? I was looking at the comparables. They're going for $2,000. Really? Like, you can't give these fucking things away. <laughs> you can't push it onto the road and get someone to steal it. Like, they're fucking worthless, man. Wow. Like, I don't even know if I can send it to the auction because the float fee is going to be that. Brad says it's hard to get parts for those things. Wow. So the old GM and Chevy like tandems and Optics five stuff. tons. Yeah. Because yeah. I looked at a tandem hook truck. Oh, yeah? A long time ago. Well, not maybe not, maybe a year ago. And Brad was like, yeah, it's really hard to get parts for that. Today. Really? Well, that must yeah. be it. But I can't send it to auction for $2,000. My God. You'd be better to scrap it. You'd probably get three grand in scrap. I take off the box and get two grand for the box for the toolbox on the back it was six thousand dollars for that toolbox you know a couple grand for the flat deck what did you do with the aluminum thing that was on the back of your dodge the toolbox or the um the background i still have it sitting at my yard yeah yeah I, because it won't fit on the ford right no i got a different one for the ford well, if you buy the Dodge, it'll just fit on because it's exactly the same exactly truck. Same, yeah. <laughs> Here you buy one, you can just. I was like, I'm gonna buy that thing off Chad because I like that thing, and no one around us has them. So they're made in Cornwall. That's what, yeah, you said it was made there. Cab racks are from Cornwall. They're a very nice cab rack, and they're cheap, man. Like five hundred bucks for an aluminum headache rack. Really? Yeah, they're like a thousand or fifteen hundred bucks for like a steel one. Yeah, they're expensive. Yeah, that's a good deal. It is a good deal. I went to high school with the guy who builds them's brother. He got beat up in computer class. <laughs> you remind him of that every time you show the yeah. yeah. Well, no, because this is his brother, but they look the exact same. So, brother, the guy, is up. there anyone in the Cornwall area that you didn't somehow go to? Yeah, yeah. There's, I mean, there's five high schools, right? Like it's not. I need, I, I don't know. It's a medium sized town. There's five high schools in Cornwall? Yeah. That seems like a lot. Well, there's two of them are French, and there's three English ones. Yeah, there's at least five. I think there's five high schools in Oshawa. Yeah, I can't name five high schools in Kitchener. Oh, Kitchener's got to have at least five high schools. Yeah. Kitchener takes a beating on TikTok. They call it the worst place in North America. To live. <laughs> <Do they? laughs> oh yeah, I constantly see videos about how shitty Kitchener is. Like, That's is great. Really there, 
Is it shitty there? I don't know. We talk about all the violence. The game. I think. Oh, yeah, I can see that for sure. Especially in like the area that I kind of. Yeah, I I would say that it's gone downhill for sure. So in the old age area, there's a lot of gang violence. Uh, my school was called Forest Heights. Uh, it had a nickname of Warren like Heights, and that uh, brought with it a lot of different. Uh, could you call them gangs or like some sort of violence and segregated groups of cultural clash? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It, it like every year the first week of school, it was just like one huge fight after the next so like the first week of school would be oh there's gonna be a fight over here and it's this per- this group against this group and then you'd like walk over after school and watch the this huge brawl take place and then uh that, that was the first week of school always did you ever get in the ball no no not in those fights no no that would be bad which which group were you in uh i was in the group that wasn't violent <laughs> i guess no it was um the groups that were more violent were ones that were english as a second language learners i guess you could say new canadians yeah temporary foreign worker <laughs> <laughs> uh I don't know how that we didn't like the landscaping industry didn't end up on the temporary foreign worker thing. Yeah, I don't know. Did the oh. nurseries like? Well, I guess the, or does that fall in early? Oh, yeah. That's true. They're all about those temporary foreign workers. I think that the nurseries though they're legitimately temporary. Yeah, yeah, I suppose they go home at the at like they have to go any home. nursery that I've ever dealt with. They all they all go home and the, and then they. Then their winters at home, and then they come back in the spring, and they—that's what they all in any place I've ever dealt with, anyway. Yeah, so they all do. Hmm. So we—I don't know if you guys saw the video of Jack in the weeds. Yeah. <laughs> so those weeds, in those weeds, there was reforestation planting, which. Chad, you've probably done it before. It's a bunch of seedlings that are a foot tall. So Did you actually the, have to go and count them? The, so the, the landscape architect had scheduled the final plant count to give us the, the end deficiency list. And I said, okay, perfect. So she, uh, and I thought, I've been to lots of these things, and normally they just wander mm-hmm. around. And As long as in general, like all the plants are there, they sign off and you're done, right? Maybe they... They pick a couple things so they because they, they they want you to do something, but not we we counted every plant. Like what? three of us, four of us. There were two architects and me and Jack, Jack and I, and uh, we're searching through the goldenrod for these one foot seedlings, and we've been doing it for twenty minutes, half an hour, and the one landscape architect and I, I honestly, I. I admire her dedication and I didn't find the whole thing annoying at all because she was doing her job. She was doing what people, and it's so rare to find someone that actually does their fucking job. She was actually doing it. And so we're wandering through, and it got to a point where I, we had been looking for a spruce seedling for like 20 minutes in the goldenrod. And I, and some of these things had been eaten by rabbits because there's rabbits in the goldenrod looking for these seedlings. And I felt like saying, can we, can you just mark this as a replacement? Because this thing's worth three bucks. Yeah. Is that yeah. fucking seedling worth three bucks? I've, I've spent more of my life looking for it than it would cost me if Bill just put one in. But then I didn't want to say that because then that minimizes everything we're doing. And it also makes it like, oh, there's none of these and none of those and replace that. So we continued to search till we found it. And I'm not even 100% sure that the, the younger architect found it. She just said, I found it over here. And everyone was like, great. And we wandered off. But I never actually saw it. So I'm not 100% <laughs> sure that. But yeah, we. See, my favorite part of that inspection 
they said, we got to check out the boat ramp. Because they have like a canoe launch there. And the canoe launch is these weird rubber mats with grass growing through them with these things that you you put a drill bit on and you screw them into the ground yeah. to hold the mats down. Um, but we didn't do it. Sightscape did it before they went bankrupt. So she's over there saying, you need to screw these down and you got to do this. And I'm like, am I responsible for this? I didn't fucking do this. First I'm responsible for the shitty soil. Now I'm responsible for this boat ramp that I never got fucking paid for. But we fixed the boat ramp anyways because I was like, fuck it, it's just easier to fix it than start to divide up this one issue. Yeah. So the, and there's, they signed off and I think we're actually done there, which is like a miracle. Nice. Uh, yeah. Oh, minus we never did the top dresses. I guess I got to send, maybe that, if we can't go to work tomorrow, I'll send them for the top dress. Do you have a top dress the, machine? No. The engineer on that, so there's a, a triangle of sod there, and Ricky had it graded, so it's like, shot it, it all flowed out. And then in, the engineer came and said, you have to take a trash load of soil out of this. So he took a trash load of soil and said, hey, this isn't going to flow here. Like, it's going to hold water. And the guy said, nope, this is the way I want it. It has to be this way or I'm not signing off. And so then Ricky said, again, this is a, this is a big hole in the middle of this triangle now. The guy said, nope, this is the way it's going to be. So then we started it. And now, it, then, well, first problem was they ran the sprinklers for an hour a night every day, or two hours a night when they're supposed to be 15 minutes a week. <laughs> like two hours. So water held in the triangle. And then everyone was like, there's water in the triangle. You have to strip all the sod and fucking fix it. And I was like, I, again, this guy said he wouldn't sign off. But then, of course, when the water was holding and everyone was freaking out, the engineer guy slunk to the back of the meeting and never said a word because there was no email about it. Oh, I never, oh, oh. So now the triangle still holds a bit of water because the, when they stop running the sprinklers for two hours a fucking night, it's better. But I feel like if we do a nice pop dressing in the spring, it'll the grass will all come up and it'll, it's, it's barely, it, I just, it's, I feel like we just need to do it so that we can say that we did it and then hopefully no one bugs us about it again. Commercial landscaping, baby. You're responsible for everything. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Everything that ever happened on that property. Ever. Yeah. So, you said you had to go in an hour, Chad? Well, I didn't. Mike did. Mike did. Yeah, around nine. Mike's got to go. <laughs> I've, got, oh. uh, I've got a question for you guys. I've got somebody reaching out to me. Asking to fly me out to Northern Virginia to take a look at their failed polymeric sand project. Wow. Is this a Fly. setup of like a polymeric sand company trying to take me out or something? When you get out there. Yeah. Maybe they're using the, the Jay-Z Beyonce method. Drug you, get you on a plane, and then the plane crashes, and then your song aren't a hit anymore and Beyonce's ahead of you. <laughs> oh, they're, they're, they're the Polysand, the Polysand company's got Jay-Z and Beyonce now. I haven't Fucking, heard that one. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's what the rumor has happened to Aaliyah. Really? She's getting more popular than Beyonce and uh, supposedly she was loaded on that plane that crashed and she was passed out. Dang. That's what they're all saying on the, uh, on the rumor mill right now. They're saying that's why Adele broke her Grammy in half and gave half of it to Beyonce because they said they would kill her or something. <laughs> Some other person that, oh, there's two or three other people that, like saying, oh, Left Eye Lopez or something. They supposedly they killed her too. Really? It's all from, it's all from the big Puff Daddy tape. Wow. Holy. The tape. They're all coming out. Yeah. So are you going to go to West Virginia to look at Phil Polyson? No, I'm probably not going to go to West Virginia. Do you want to stop there on the way to A10A? Yeah. <laughs> Take a quick uh, drop there. Yeah. Northern Virginia, in the suburbs of Washington, D.C. Who I'm going to FaceTime them. Who invited you? Uh, just somebody that watches the YouTube. Oh, a YouTube person. A YouTube person. A homeowner. My, my YouTube channel died. It died? No, I just, I got burned out. 
I got too busy. It took a lot <laughs> you of time. were posting you were posting videos every single day. I know, and then I just I got busy and distracted by life. Kind of like if you're trying to make me a strategic partner, didn't work out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fucking terrible strategic partner. So maybe you can be a, a HGH HQ strategic partner. No, uh, no expectations. How many meetings do I have to go? <laughs> <laughs> How many how many chances do I get at bailed meeting? Oh man, you were growing on your YouTube. You're at 457 subscribers. Yeah, we were growing pretty steadily. Yes, I agree. We we're doing pretty good, and people actually kind of like the videos of me wandering around with a camera on my head. But now I just I'm so focused on trying to get through this season. We're so close to making it through the season. You know, we're at the home stretch here. But are you still filming so that you can edit them in the? Oh, I haven't. I haven't filmed anything oh. along. Since. And then Paisley's uh, Paisley's soccer is coming to a head here this month. Um, we've got four universities that are interested in her playing for them, mm -hmm. and uh, so we have to go visit them all, is to check out the campuses. Uh, so it's become a that's become a whole thing too. Last night we were at. Uh, Trent University, she got invited to practice. Um, and then we have to go to Algoma and to the Sault Ste. Marie. We have to go to Harris Stroh in St. Louis. And we have to go to, uh, oh, maybe I'll stop and get the headache rack from you, Chad. We have to go to, uh, Mount Allison in New Brunswick so far. Those are the four that have gotten back to her so far. So. Wow. But that, that makes for a lot of driving too. I'll probably have to change the oil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just got fucking. I don't know. Like, I, I, it's hard to do a YouTube thing all the time and do the rest of your life. I agree. Chad, you, what, what happened to yours? I'll put some in the winter there, but I'm have you been filming too? Uh, I did it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna pull it back out for the tow rotator. I gotta do some tow rotator stuff. Ah. But, uh, yeah, I got a business to run. <laughs> I'm not... I think that that's what happens. I think that that's what happens with... So anyone who's doing any kind of influencing for like profit, for money, I can respect that because I guarantee you set your business to the side to do that and it's a commitment. And your business is not as good or as profitable because you're doing that. Because you, there's just no way you can do that and focus on your business. Now, your business can still exist. Yeah. And it can still be successful. But I don't like, I don't think I, I was thinking about that today when I was, um, <laughs> blowing off the meeting to tear out asphalt. <laughs> I was like, couldn't have this woman come out and kick me off the property before the meeting? Why did you wait till the meeting was fucking done to ban me from the fucking job site, motherfucker? Um, and I, I just was like, man, like these guys that are doing a lot of this stuff, like a lot of this content creation and, and influencing and, you know, uh, the amount of time and effort that it must take away from their actual businesses is wild. Or personal and, life. And personal life and business. I, it's still like you still have to do these meetings during business hours and stuff. Like it's mm -hmm. um and I could see once you're like established and you are uh and you're making money from it, but the initial investment and how it will would deter from your business, um, that's a ballsy move to do that to me. You know, mm -hmm. instead of just continuing to grow the business that you have. That's what happens to me, is exactly what Chad said. I just I start down a path with good intentions, but then the business just is more important to me than strategic partnership. <laughs> I justify everything that I do online as supporting both the online business as well as the landscaping business. If it didn't, then I couldn't do it. But do you think that if you never did any of that stuff, and just absolutely focus all of your energy on your landscaping business. Your, you think your landscaping business would be ahead of where it is? 
No, because it still comes back to my uh, personal situation in that it the okay, the landscaping okay. business would be the same. If if my personal situation was different, I would have more time to focus on my landscaping business. But I still think that having some sort of online presence is going to be extremely valuable in the future. And I see it as like it it, it brings awareness to the software. It brings awareness to how to hardscape. It brings awareness also very much like especially in August when my timeline was getting pretty tight as to like picking up more work. I just all of a sudden had this explosion of people reaching out to me. And now like I'm booked till early 2025 with work. So like it, it supports literally everything. It took me three years to, to grow it to, and it's not even like big at all, but it's, it's at a point where it's, it's supported all of those. Like I've, I've had people sign up from my YouTube videos for the software. I've had many of clients, like hundreds of thousands of dollars now worth of work sign up through it. And I also see it as a valuable uh, future play for attracting talent into the business as well. But do you think your business, say your personal situation is different and you never yeah, did absolutely. any Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you it focused de- all your, do yeah. you think your business would be large, bigger than it is now if you just said, fuck all for this sure. stuff? Short term, short term, I think it would have been. And then and then it comes down to like, I, I don't think I want to grow a huge landscaping business. I don't think that's in my cards to like, you know, have 10 to crews out on the road or anything like that. Um, So that's where I want to use my strengths as well as other things that I'm also interested in and pursue those things and have multiple different businesses as opposed to like doubling down on one single business and trying to go ahead with that. So it also comes down to my personal preference there. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. I just, I, my business isn't at a point where I can step away from it enough to probably have a successful strategic partnership. Or it's going to have to be a strategic partnership with people who are insanely patient. Like, and I don't know if my business will ever be in a place where it isn't because I don't know that I'll ever be a person who runs that kind of business. We all have a strategic partnership with each other, I suppose. Yeah, that's true. That's we true. meet every uh, after hours, though. That's the only way that this would work. Yeah. yeah. Well, it uh, is a strategic partnership. Running our businesses. <laughs> it is a strategic partnership. Yeah. You never know. A lot of people stop digging right before they hit gold. Two years of digging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. You never. A lot of people stop right before they right before the. You know, I don't know if you ever seen that meme where there's a guy. Tunneling yeah. and he stops and he turns around and then go like that. Hold right there. Quit now, you fucking. Who knows if I'd made one more head video and posted it, I could have been the next Victory Concrete. <laughs> head video. <laughs> I think he. Although, I think he was really smart with the way he did his videos, and I think that his uh, videos are heavily edited. I wouldn't say heavily edited. I think oh, that heavily, heavily. He has he, on one of his videos. He's talking about he has two editors full time editing the video. Uh, it's his daughters, though. But they're still doing it full time. That's heavily. And, and he started his business. He started that by just him doing it, though, as well. But like, they are. He, heavily, you should go back to his early time. videos, and I don't like all it is is him talking, and then time lapse, and then him talking, and then time lapse. Like that's all the editing that's going on there. But the videos now are heavily edited. If you watch, I, I guess I haven't watched them in a while. There, there, there's like a million different edits. Like if you really watch the videos, you can tell how much time people have spent editing those videos professionally. Yeah, like they're dropping a saw and it's bouncing up and down into people's hands in the video, and I, and I don't have a problem with it. I think that obviously that's the graduation of your content. Your content yeah, yeah. starts at, and now you're getting it. Now you have two professional editors on staff and they're editing the videos for you and 
like that's just the graduation of being successful. I, I think he he got really popular because he had he always had a beginning, a middle, and an end to every video, and he had recurring characters. Like he yeah. he really shot his employees throughout the day, and it, it, like in concrete work really lends itself to problems, right? It's like go 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 go, and we're gonna have problems, and we're gonna try to solve them throughout the day as we go. Um, like yeah. I think concrete work really lends itself to a really good YouTube channel. But I I think that the difference between all of his videos, he's been recording for the entire day. And then he's taken all 12 hours of the day and chopped it down into an hour. Yeah. Right? So he's taking 12 hours of footage and editing 12 mm -hmm. hours of footage to one hour. What I was doing was taking 15 minutes of footage and posting 15 minutes of footage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think you can get really good at, if you are a good editor, you can get really good at filming efficiently. So you can actually basically edit yourself as you're filming. So like, I'm not going to film this part. I'm going to do a time lapse over here, but this part over here, I'm going to start filming. And that's like what I'm going to put into my video. And then I'm going to stop filming. Basically. That's yeah. what I do on site. I just film everything and then you it's raw and you see it. Yeah. 500 people like it, I guess. Plus one and 57. Yeah. I, I, anyways, I, I like that guy. I'm not being critical of him. They are edited videos. Well, which obviously that's what people want because he's super successful. So, um, all right, it's ten after nine, Mike. All right, this is the end of the podcast. Ooh, thank you for watching. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, those people run the world. <laughs> They're so impressive. What a bunch of freaks.